Welcome everyone, in front of me I have the Sony Xperia Pro Ice. This is marketed as a camera which so conveniently runs Android. No, this is an Android phone with an incredible camera. Let's take a look at it. So if you don't bother about hacking this device, this phone is useless, okay? You may have seen the reviews, you, uh, the recording is incredible, but you can only record for five minutes. Well, I use this phone to record all of my videos on this channel and Saunders Tech, Mr. Saunders, and uh, I can record up to an hour, two hours, three hours, until the storage runs out. How? Well, I hacked this device. And if you are not willing to hack your Sony Xperia Pro I, this phone is useless. Go for another phone, right? iPhones will probably get you a better video. Well, not better, but as almost good video performance. But if you are willing to hack this device, this phone is incredible. So here's what's up. You need to root your Sony Xperia Pro I, and you need to remove a bunch of blocks that Sony puts in place in the software. So routing is very simple, I have to join the description. And once you have rooted, you can use so, uh, stuff like SD Mate. So this application here allows you to remove the recording limit on the Sony. Now you may think that removing the recording limit is going to cause the camera to overheat and it's gonna stop working. And in, it's kind of, that's kind of true, but let's take a look at this. So if I search up thermal here, you can see you have the endurance mode and the thermal control. So if you use uh, the regular, uh, you know, Video Pro app, there will be a thermal sign you see, and then it'll just block you from recording, and that thermal sign will not go away. It'll just block you from using the phone. Well, if you turn off this thermal control, in fact, this is the endurance mode, well, then that doesn't show up. Thermal control means that the 120 hertz never turns off because when I was recording in the past, you know, what's the point of 120 hertz when I record and I just see 60? It hurts my eyes. It really does. So I disabled that as well. So I also installed this thermal disabler app. I brute forced it onto my device. It's for older Android, but when you're rooted, you can just ignore all of those blocks. And what does that do on its own? All it does on its own is if you use, um, you know, the Video Pro or uh, the photo pro you're never going to get that thermal warning ever again you may have watched other reviews that's why i'm, I'm making this video like you have watched other reviews and when you have watched other reviews you will notice that the recording doesn't last more than five minutes sometimes it doesn't last more than two minutes well when you do those two little mods it's a very simple thing to do well now you're recording for up to 20 minutes half an hour but for you said you rec could record unlimited well you have to do even more mods. You ready for this? So what you have to do on top of this is you have to go to Root Booster, right? And then from here, you need to activate the Extreme Mode Speed Boost, okay? And once you activate this, this will allow you to record for an unlimited duration of time. And now the Sony Xperia Pro is an actual camera that can record and not thermal throttle. So that's what you need to do. Now, on top of this, you can do a bunch of other cool things. So, you know, if a, um, a phone, it has a battery and the battery degrades over time. Well, Sony has this gaming mode feature called HS Power Control. And this was the reason why I bought this phone, because I plan on using this phone for the camera only. Like, OK, the apps, sure, I'll use them every now and then, but I'm not going to use them that frequently. And HS Power Control means that you can power the phone from the charger and not the battery. And why is that important? Some people, or most people say, oh, because you're not going to emit heat. No one gives a fuck about the heat. What you care about is the longevity of the battery, because if the battery expands, the phone's going to stop working entirely, number one. Number two, uh, if you are recording most of the time, or sometimes you don't want to be recording, if your battery health drains because you're recording so much, well, then when you want to use the phone normally, you're not going to have much battery life. Well, when you use HS Power Control, you're not stressing the battery, you're not charging the battery, which means you're not going to be using battery cycles. This is what people fail to remember. So I use personally, is I use Filmic Pro. And what's really cool is you can assign it to a button on the side here. This camera button will only uh, be allowed to be assigned for Camera Pro. In theory of a route, you could change that, but I don't know how to. This one here, you can change to whatever you want inside the settings. It's like deeply hidden. I can't even remember the setting toggle. So what I do personally is I get Filmic Pro, and I put it into gaming mode. So if I go like this, boom, with Game Enhancer, I can turn on HS Power Control. So this will not power the battery or power the phone itself. And this is such a cool feature. So when I'm recording half an hour, one hour, um, 
usually if you were doing that you'd probably use a battery cycle and the battery cycle is usually a days of use and used it in an hour so you could probably be using you know 10 days worth of the battery in one day if you're recording a lot well guess what with the hs power control you're using zero cycles and that is just the coolest part now on top of that there is the battery care which doesn't require root uh, it's really annoying though in some ways so with a battery battery care I limit the charge to 80%. So you can see, I'm currently at 51%, I'll use the phone. And so by limiting it to 80%, uh, you're not going to have to worry about the battery going to 100%. And that means that the longevity uh, will be great. So here's what's up. Because I can record 4K60 without worrying about the thermal issues, uh, I want to use this phone until it literally doesn't turn on again. And so by doing those changes, number one, you can actually use this phone to record videos. Number two, you can have a good experience. On top of that, Recording videos itself is great. So uh, you keep in mind quickly, I, I forgot this. If you use Video Pro Cinema Pro, you cannot put them into uh, the Game Enhancer app. It just won't allow. So what you have to do is you have to extract the APK by using something like SD Made, reinstall the APK onto your device, and then it will allow it. Okay, if it doesn't allow it, then use App Cloner, and then that would work as well. But because I don't use these two apps, I don't care personally. So another thing on top of this is you have a headphone jack right here. Now some people seem to forget, but uh, if you use a microphone, you can just plug this in, boom, and now you don't need to worry about adapters or any of that garbage. So me personally, my setup is I'll have Rode Wireless Go 2 plugged in here, and then I'll just put the charger in for the Sony Xperia Pro I, boom. And just like that, you uh, you can go and uh, record video. So I use Filmic Pro personally, and I use it to sell for YouTube. And this setup works really well, right? I usually have these uh, wireless go to shove it in like the, like my, what do you call it? I know we call it hoodie, t-shirt. I'm English, completely. it's my first language. But um, yeah, I'll use this to record videos. I can record as long as I like. I've tested Cinema Pro, Video Pro. Uh, as long as you do the modifications, you can record for as long as you like. And so you've changed this phone from a phone which is literal garbage to a phone which is, I mean, you have the best camera of any smartphone. This is the same camera as a £1,000, uh, you know, point and shoot, you know, the Sony or uh, whatever, 9264121, because that's how Sony names their devices. The phone line ain't that bad compared to the camera line let me tell you that much but uh, the point is now you have an incredible shooter and you have an incredible android don't forget this has snapdragon triple eight okay very powerful uh you have 512 gigs of storage this is great for recording you have uh, on top of this uh a one hand job <laughs> one hand job solo uh dual sim if you want i personally use the uh, dual sim as you can see but this area can also be used for an sd card and i put in a terabyte sd card works perfectly fine uh the main problem though is when i'm recording videos sometimes right, i'll fail the recording so let's say i'll speak i'll screw up and i want to restart and for some reason after restarting like if the recording's really long it takes a while to process the recording it's, it's hard to explain but what it means is when i've done the recording and i want to you know, put it to my computer. If I do it right away, the recording corrupts, like the last like 10 seconds. That's an issue. That's why I don't use the SD card anymore. Me personally, what I've noticed is it's actually faster to transfer the files via uh, an external uh, SSD. I have a really fast one. It's actually faster to just put it on the external SSD, copy it, and then I need to go to settings, storage. I need to eject the SSD, otherwise the files will corrupt. And then put it on my Mac, and then just like that, I'm good to go, and I'm editing if I edit. Because you may notice, I haven't edited this video. I have most of my videos, I don't even edit, right? And that's why I love the Sony Xperia Pro, because the main feature about this, when you use Filmic Pro, right? The reason why I use this is because if I go to settings, CMS, or CMS, resolution here, you can see I can set the bitrate to whatever I'd like. So when it comes to Cinema Pro, Filmic Pro, they record at 100 megabit per second. Now on YouTube, that's that's higher than the recommended average, right? And for the videos I record, I don't need 100 megabit per second. I only need 20, maybe 15. And with economy mode on Filmic Pro, it reduces the bit rate, which reduces the file size, which reduces the time it takes to upload a video, which reduces the time it takes to process a video. So if I need to get a quick turnaround time, I just reduce the bit rate here. Video codec H264, 
works perfectly fine. If you want to record Temba HDR, you can also set it to HVC, Temba HDR boom, just like that. And the recording also works no problem there as well. So um, this is an incredible camera. I really like it. Uh, you'll like it too. The phone itself is really solid. The, the selfie camera is garbage, but I haven't used a selfie camera yet. So I'm just saying what the review said. The fact is the situation, I think the reason why this camera is garbage is because they know that you're only going to be using the back camera, okay? I don't use the front camera on this device because I use it to record videos. It's a camera at the end of the day. I've never seen the issue. Uh, I use it for my banking apps. I play games every now and then, but I have an iPad Pro for that. Like, I don't use a phone that much. I use this for calls, as you see with the dual SIM. I use it for text messages. I use it for stuff like that, but I don't use it that much other than the camera. And that's why the, uh, the camera being garbage was troubling me. But I got around all the blocks. I showed you how to get around all the blocks. And once you get around the blocks, you have a very good phone experience. So, experience, Xperia, ho, ho, ho. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts. If you do own this phone in the comments, let me know your thoughts. If you are planning on the, uh, buying this device, I'll just say quickly, Sony Xperia 1 Mark III has all the same specs, just not the camera system. So if you don't care about the camera that much, just get that one. But if you do care about the camera, probably that's probably why you're watching this video, then buy the Sony Xperia Mark Pro I even. As long as you root it, you have a good experience. If you don't root it, forget it. See you guys later. Bye-bye.